Hello and welcome to NOAA Digest, NOAA Community Media's news magazine show. I'm your host, Jack McCarthy, and we've got a great show. And we're starting it off with one of our all-stars, who I believe is the most frequent guest to ever appear on NOAA Digest, and that is your Director of Veteran Services, Teddy Mulvihill. Jack, great to be back. It is great to see you again, but it's kind of a bittersweet because we're here to talk about you uh, retiring. That's, that's true, Jack. I mean, uh, it, it's, uh, the bottom line is it's time to let a young man have his chance at doing this job. All right, so before we get to, let's just give a little background, you know, before we uh, get to your duties as that and, and everything. Um, Norwood High. Norwood High, class of 72. Uh, went it, into the military. Right after graduation, uh, four years, 76, came home. Bounced around, I've ended up on the federal payroll post office, and then decided that uh, I saw an opportunity when Tiger was, Tiger Thomas, my predecessor, who served for 27 years, great job, helped thousands and thousands of veterans. Uh, I saw that uh, he had been mentioning hanging it up, and I said, you know what, I see an opportunity there, you know, to really do some, do some damage, make an impact. And so I started lining stuff up. I wanted, when Tiger retired, I wanted people to be the first person's name they thought of mine. Right. And that's how it worked out. And so I took the job. So I forget which branch of the service we I were. was the Air Force. Okay. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a fantastic time. Bad time of, uh, 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 to serve on active duty with the Vietnam War. But having said that, uh, as I advise uh, young men and women who come to us, you know, asking about a military career, um, you learn lessons, life lessons, and character building that will hold you in good stead for the rest of your life. So, and then how many years were you uh, in, with the post office? I was there for 13 years. Okay. And I carried the mail in uh, Roxbury, and then I moved over to Dorchester. And I must have logged uh, 100,000 miles on my sneakers, went through 10 pairs. <laughs> uh, and it was a great job. Outdoors yeah. every day, fresh air, rain, sleet, snow. It was just wonderful. And so what, in what year did you uh, take over as Director of Veteran Services? 2000. 2000. Uh, April 3rd, uh, the year 2000. Uh, it was a, uh, a great time uh, for me because it just seemed to be a, a bookmark. One chapter ended, another chapter began, you know, on the, on, on the 2000s. Sure. So it was, uh, it was a great, great time for me uh, and my family and a great opportunity, and uh, I jumped on it. So uh, probably, unless they have a veteran or know a veteran, they probably have no idea uh, what it is that you do. So help us out with that. It is the most remarkable job, Jack, and, and thanks for that question because it is kind of a, well, it's a catch-all. Hmm. We act as the point of contact for our young men and women coming home from active duty. And by point of contact, I mean they come to our office, it's a one-stop shop. We advise them and counsel them on the benefits and services that they have earned, not charity, not a handout, earned benefit in all areas, education. Uh, health care, uh, compensation, disabilities, housing, I mean, the whole spectrum of stuff. Uh, we're a one-stop shop, and if we don't know the answer, we can certainly direct them because of the contacts we made to the proper people who know the answer. But also, so I remember, uh, you remember Joe DeSilva, too. Joe A. So I remember when he, was, he came back from uh, Iran, and he was saying, he, he said, what a wonderful job Teddy did with my family and all the families of people that were serving at the time. So... What was that like and what kind of things were you doing? That's a remarkable uh, story, Jack, uh, in and of itself, because I did go through a transition period from a peacetime service officer to wartime status. After September 11th, everything changed. We had 40, 50 families in Newark whose all of a sudden, daddy had to go off to war. And that had a huge impact on, on families in this town. Uh, all of a sudden, dad's not there. They've got young kids in school. Who's going to pull up the driveway? Who's going to mow the lawn? Electrical bills? Everything, the whole nine yards. So as a result of that, we started, and time went by, we started seeing young men like Joe come back from theater and Danny Henry and, and you know, all these other young men who served uh, uh, early on in the conflict. And again, it was my responsibility and our department's responsibility to make sure that transition from military life to back to civilian life went smoothly. And that was a challenge sometimes. Yeah, but it, was, it must be a comfort because, you know, I, I think everybody knows you, you know. And it, it's, it's a comfort to come and see a familiar face, you know? It, it's helpful. Uh, I, I can tell you with great honesty, back in 74, when I came back from Southeast Asia and went to see Tiger Thomas, shook my hand and said, welcome home. 
and that had an impact on me as a 22 year old yeah especially then because not everybody was so welcoming not everybody said welcome yeah <laughs> but yeah it's it's good jack it's yeah. good to be it's good to be you know in the public eye and and, and and have a reputation of being accessible that's important so um is there one thing or maybe there's a couple like thing that you're so proud of that you were able to accomplish great stories abound the you know in in the almost quarter of a century uh of sitting in that chair uh We've helped thousands upon thousands upon thousands of families and veterans. And that's the thing also, too, Jack. It's not just the veteran. It's the family. It's the dependent. It's the spouse. It's the kids. You know, uh, it's a great program, and we're so proud of our national reputation as being the leader in state veterans' benefits. But I remember one time uh, when, a, when a, a, a spouse loses her husband. The guy was shot down in World War II. He was a fighter pilot, and he died. Time went by. She remarried. Great guy. They married 50 years, had nine kids. You know, just a wonderful life. And then he passed away, and she came to me for benefits. And, of course, we, we talked and stuff. We got to make sure that she was squared away, and the family was as well. And just in passing, I was leaving the house. And she said, you know, you know, I, my first husband would be so proud. And I said, oh, you were married before? She goes, yeah, he was killed in World War II. I said, what? So what happens is, as the widow of a World War II guy who was killed in action, she was eligible for benefits. Then when she remarried, those benefits stopped. But now that Mike has passed away, all of a sudden, again, she's the unremarried spouse of a guy who was killed, and she was eligible for benefits again. So she's 82 years old. We put her back on the federal benefits and ah, nice. improved the quality of her life. Yeah. And that's the bottom line. That's, that's really ex that's Good story. That must have been exciting. It was a great story. Yeah. Is there anything that you got frustrated that you just couldn't get done, that you were hoping to get done, or something... You know, I mean, uh, outreach is so important to this uh, department. Uh, we have a, uh, a mission to make sure that folks understand the benefits and services they're eligible for and they deserve and they've earned. And sometimes people will fall through the cracks and didn't know, didn't know they were eligible for this, didn't know there was help out there, and I feel terrible about that. I mean, you remember back in the day, I actually had a show on yeah. Road Community Media for nine, nine months. I had a daily newspaper column or a weekly newspaper column for almost two years. And uh, as time went by, those became unviable options. But getting the word out is so important. And the only regret that I have is that we're probably missed opportunities uh, that I couldn't get enough people educated as to what they earned. But yeah. we're still trying. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about the department. It's, you're not a solo flyer there, right? I am not. I've been blessed with uh, Cindy... Uh, uh, Cindy Postler is uh, actually was my sister Suzanne's best friend from from kindergarten, so I've known Cindy since she was this high. But she's been a remarkable addition to the office and absolutely invaluable in our mission. She does so much and has so much knowledge now and and uh, and experience that she can handle uh, most anything that comes through the door, which frees me up to do my outreach and frees me up to go and 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 speak to the seniors and speak to the kids up in Norwood High and and do all the other ancillary duties that the job entails. And she holds down the fort. I don't have to worry about anything when I'm not there. She's just the best there is. So what's next for you? You know, that's a great question, Jack. I think initially um, there's going to be a transition. Uh, I'm going to work part-time uh, because nobody from Norwood retires. You know, they're, they're always called back. And uh, so I will be working with the, uh, uh, the new director as they come in and, and get on board and making sure there's a smooth transition and, and uh, our benefits continue unabated. But uh, personally, uh, I'm just looking forward to spending more time with my kids and more time with their kids, my grandchildren now. Uh, I've got a daughter coming back after living in Australia for five years. Wow. Uh, I know, I said to her, Kelly, you couldn't marry a kid from Dedham? You had to marry a kid from Australia? But uh, she's coming back and bringing us a grandson. So it's, it's just great. Uh, Family time is going to go right to the front of the list, and uh, I couldn't be more excited about that. Well, I'm going to be a little presumptuous and, and say on the behalf of the folks of Norwood, thank you for your service. And I, I don't mean, I mean your Air Force service, yeah. your post office service, and, you know, lately your Director of uh, Veteran Services service. You know, I, I appreciate that, Jack. Uh, so many times I'm presented with an opportunity to improve the quality of life for somebody, and uh, that's... It's cathartic, not just cathartic for me, but it, it also gives us an opportunity to recognize we have to help each other right. in this life. In this daytime, this day and age, we, we need to help each other. You know, we have to remember that we are all 
uh, we're all in this together. And so if somebody needs a helping hand, reach down and, and pull them back up. Well, I, you know, personally, I've been blessed to have you as a friend. You know, you've been a guest here many times. We've Likewise. done many things together, well, some of which we won't talk about. That's true. Um, but it, great to see you as always. Jack, my great honor to be with you uh, again today. But uh, going back all these many years, uh, your service to the town is an invaluable piece of uh, our culture as well. Uh, the information that you bring on a weekly basis to the citizens of this town you can't put a number on that. You know, it's, it's important, that the work that you do, and uh, I wish you many, many, many years, more years sitting in that chair. Well, thank you, but it's, every, every success I've had is because of the people on the other side of that camera. That I understand. <laughs> but thanks again for being with Jack, us. Great pleasure. And, and now we're going to uh, visit with Ron Marshallsey, who's actually visiting with Nate Buchanan, a Norwood High graduate who is an extra in an upcoming movie. What movie it is, Ron will tell us. Hello, Norwood. My name is Ron Marshallsey. I'm filling in for Jack on this interview because today I have the pleasure to be joined by writer, director, actor, interviewer, and member of the NHS class of 2015, Nate Buchanan. Nate, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me on the show, Ron. Absolutely. We've got to have you on because, Nate, the reason you're on today is because you're in a supporting role in mm. a movie that's coming out this summer. What can you tell us about the role mm. and the movie overall? Uh, yes, so this movie is called Hustler's Dreams. It'll be dropping on Tubi real soon. Right now, they're just fixing up a couple of the ending parts right now before they release the release date. But I'm playing a young Troy, and basically with young Troy, he's a young drug dealer that gets his way up, right? Okay. Becomes a kingpin. And then we have Dominique, young Dominique, is trying to basically take down myself, Troy. All right, okay. And... I know you've acted in quite a few different things. How did the process start for this specific role? Well, so honestly how this started, I kind of, well, I'll just tell you how I even started in acting. So how I started in acting was I was doing a lot of music videos when I first moved out to Atlanta. Once I was in the music video scene, you know, I was meeting a lot of people, and that's how I kind of started getting my way into acting. Okay. So I was just asking him, you know, how do I get on the screen? What do I do, you know? Because as a young actor, nobody really knows. You just see these guys on this big screen, but how did these guys actually do it? Where did they go? How did they start it, you know? So they basically told me, hey, you should start doing a little bit of background. Just get yourself out there just so you can start getting on set so you know how things actually move. You know what I'm saying? Because Absolutely. if you've never been on set, you don't know how to conduct yourself amongst actual professionals. So I started doing some background work. Once I started doing some background work, then I was like, all right, well, I have enough of background. Now I really want to start getting these speaking roles. So I just put my head down and started applying to speaking roles, started taking some acting classes just to get better at my acting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one thing led to another. I started getting some uh, stuff on my resume. And then uh, Ponzo Houdini, he owns Cake Boss Life Entertainment. He's the one. Cake Boss Life Entertainment is basically the production company for Hustler's Dreams. And he reached out to me and said, hey, Nate, you know, this role will really fit you. I got something that we're writing. Would you be available, you know? I looked at the script and I said, yeah, put me down. That's huge, man. Yeah, so he reached yeah. out to you. You didn't, you didn't audition for that. That's, yes, yes. that's huge, man. Yes, yes. That, that's everybody's dream. Yeah, you kidding thank me? You, thank you. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. So you said Tubi? That was, that's where yes. it's going to be and just release date's not official yet? Not official yet. Okay. You know, they got to do the film stuff. 100%. They got to cut it up. They got to make sure it's perfect and clean because nobody wants to look at this movie and say, eh, I don't know. So you got to put out the best work cut clean. I'm waiting for the release date. You guys will know so. All right. So. All right. We'll keep people updated yeah. for, for when it's out. So um, I was curious because I've been following your Instagram for quite a while. Mm -hmm. Basically following you since we knew each other in high school. Mm -hmm. So you've been doing acting for quite some time. When did that gear start turning? When did you actually think that mm -hmm. you wanted to be an actor? Was it here at Norwood High or was it after Norwood High? It was actually in college. Okay. Um, you know, here in Norwood High, I was so focused on football, and, you know, I went out to Hudson University. I played football over there. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually started making YouTube videos, you know. Okay. And um, I would be vlogging while I'm out. I will be vlogging while I'm DJing and stuff like that. And uh, my older sister, she actually does set design in New York, you know, on uh, Blue Bloods and different type of TV wow. shows and movies. Okay. And basically, like, this whole set right here, she would just make this whole set with her entire team. So she was like, you should really think about getting into acting. Um, you know, I love watching movies when I was a kid. I used to watch movies all the time, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it was like, I love it. How do I even get into that, right? So I auditioned for a play in New York. I seen it on Actors Access. I got the role. It was a small role. 
And that kind of leapfrogged me into wanting to be an actor. Nice. Okay. So you went to uh, Hassan, like, yeah. like you said. Um, Talk about those experiences there, mm -hmm. other than the YouTube video, especially stand up. I'm curious about that. How did that, how do you feel that got you ready to be where you are right now? Well, I'm like, with stand up, you gotta learn how to work a crowd and you gotta learn how to basically yeah. talk amongst people. It's just like in theater, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, if you're yeah. acting in theater, you're in front of so many people, so you gotta portray your voice a certain way, you gotta act a certain way, mm -hmm. you gotta be more boastful, you know? And you gotta have confidence. It, it really just stems down to confidence, you know, because that's just confidence in front of the camera, confidence on film, confidence on the stage. Yeah. It's really that confidence in yourself because if you feel confident in yourself that you can do this, then you can surely do this because it's all a competition. If you think about it, like entertainment is really sports, you know? If you're an athlete going on the field, you need to have the confidence that you are the best athlete on that field so you can perform the best. Just like if I'm acting, yeah. I gotta feel like I've prepared my character enough to where I'm confident enough to bring that character to light so other people can see it. You know? I like you as a, as a former athlete. You're you're using it now. I like yeah. that, man. That's that's yeah. that's, that's that's awesome. Yeah. Did you ever get uh, heckled? Any anything like that? Of course, you yeah. always get heckled on stage. <laughs> I'm like, I feel like I've been booed off stage before. You know what I'm saying? It happened. Everyone's been booed off stage, you know. But I feel like with those, just like you, everyone's had a bad movie. You know, there's not yeah. one actor that can say. Their whole discography was mm -hmm. fantastic. Everyone's got one bad film. Everyone's got one bad time on stage where they got booed. Absolutely. Eddie Murphy's got booed. Freaking Chris Tucker's got booed. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone's been booed before, That's but are you going to let one boo stop you? You can't. You know? You can't. You're only yeah. as strong as, 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 you, as you feel, and exactly. you're not going to let the, yeah. the critics let, let you, uh, get you down on that yeah. one. Yeah. So I mentioned in the beginning, you're a writer, director, mm -hmm. producer. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe that's mainly for the TV show College High. Yes. What is College High? Mm -hmm. um, are you still looking for funding for that project? Mm -hmm. And how has the production of with that TV show been going mm -hmm. so far? All right. So uh, College High is basically a story about myself, Nate Buchanan, uh, going to a university and dealing with the challenges of being a student athlete. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people don't understand what it is. Not only do you have to uphold grades, but you also got to perform well on the field because you could possibly get your scholarship taken away. You know what I'm saying? That's just the real reality of a player from Division One all the way to Division Three to NAIA. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, if you don't perform those two duties, you might not be able to play the next season. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So College High basically brings that light. What I like to say is uh, College High is like if All-American and Friday Night Lights had a baby, okay. it would be College High, like you that. know? Because not only do we show the lives of our football players off the field, every single episode is a high-impact football game that you're going to see. And I feel like that's like the biggest selling point with College High because I don't want to see a football movie with no football. Just like a basketball movie with no basketball exactly. or exactly. soccer movie with no soccer. It just, it just doesn't make any sense, you know? So I feel like that basically is what makes college high college high is that we bring the football to the table That's you awesome. know okay. i want to see my favorite player if he's going crazy at practice and talking all this you know junk can he do it in a football game you know is so, he really that guy is he know? that guy yeah and um to answer your other question so we are still looking for funding basically mm -hmm. what we're going to do so I uh, partnered with my buddies. Uh, they have a production company called Broken Link Productions. Okay. And um, basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to put all our heads together to really attack this industry. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because with guys like us, we're not big time known actors at this very second. So we can't just walk into a studio and say, hey, we have something, let's start working on it. Uh -huh. We have to work our way up yeah, to levels, yeah, you yeah, feel yeah. me? Okay. So what I started doing is I started working on a pitch bible. And basically what a pitch Bible is, is for TV shows, and it's going to tell you the entire uh, variety of the TV show. Go from your synopsis, log line, every breakdown about your characters, and every single breakdown about, you know, every single episode in the show, however many episodes that you have, you okay. know. So yeah. start with the pitch Bible, and then we're going to start bringing it to studios. And then if we get signed by a studio because they like our pitch Bible, perfect let's move on if they say no because you always got to be prepared for either or if they say no we want to see more okay we'll raise the money so we can shoot episode one and episode two now we have footage and the pitch bible and the pitch deck okay so at that point now you really can't say no to college high 
So speaking of footage, where so where did that? Cause you had like the sizzle reel yeah, of Polish the Eye. Reel, yeah. How, where did that footage come from? How did that get um, shot and funded? How, where did that all like the equipment mm -hmm. and the because and, mm -hmm. the jerseys look really cool. So. Thank you. <laughs> like, so uh, basically, what I, what I did, I did a uh, six month pre production. So meaning that you got to find your location, you got to find actors, you got to find the camera crew, you got to find all those things. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I started in January and the ending was in June. So in January, what I started doing is I started looking for the location first because we obviously need an area where it looks like a real football team. We don't want to just shoot it at a middle school. Yeah. You know, that <laughs> wouldn't even make any sense. Yeah. So I had to find a, a college that could not only give us the look of college high, mm -hmm. but also we could fill out everything that we needed. So I got lucky and I found this university. It was Reinhardt University where we filmed it at. And I got lucky enough to where finding that one location, I was able to get everything out of just that one location. Oh, because okay. uh, the lady, her name, she was nice enough to uh, basically, her name is Tish. She was nice enough to basically put me in position to where she put me in front of everybody else. You know, she was like, hey, I know this kid. He has a great TV show idea. I would love to help him. Here's all these connections, you know. So I had to basically hit up everyone else after she gave me those connections, which really helped me out because she didn't have to. Yeah, you know, she, she know. just saw my vision and she saw what I wanted to do and decided to help me. That's just so a nice person. So with her helping me out with that, I found everyone else in that, and that's basically how I filmed College High. All together, I say it cost me maybe four thousand dollars. All together, okay. yeah, and that that's was only for two minutes. Yeah, that yeah. Just goes to show how expensive a TV show can be. It really is, and that's just two minutes. Think about for a whole episode. So Twenty-two minutes, thirty minutes, yeah. forty-five minutes. Then you start talking yeah. about a hundred thousand yeah. dollars for an episode. Yeah. It's crazy, man. And yeah. just out of my own curiosity, what uh, was that like a twenty-three episode uh, minute time? Per episode, what kind of, or like 45 minute per episode? All right, so your... with College High, I'm shooting for at least 60 minutes an episode. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, so well, I well, already well. read out all 13 episodes. All 13 episodes is ready to go. Just... So now it's really about getting in front of these people. So we say, we have all of this. When can we get this going? Just you know what I'm saying? some money. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's really all you need at that point, you know? Right. So I have all 13 episodes ready to go. Every episode is about 60 pages long, okay. you know? Because I want it to be a full length to where, like, you can literally sit down and watch your favorite college high ego play every week. Next thing you know, people are going to have jerseys. That's a great Memorabilia, idea. Memorabilia, you know? Yeah. All college high. Their whole living room might just say all the college high because they love the players on college high so much. And they're not even a real player. They're just a... It's, it's a TV show. Yeah. I love it. And speaking of merchandise, I'm glad. It's a perfect segue. You have a bit of business in venturing in mm -hmm. addition to acting. Explain to the people what... MHMM is. So, uh, what, is, what is it? Mm. Um, sorry, uh, how did it get started mm. and what are you um, doing in the future? What can people look forward to? So, uh, MHMM is More Hustle, More Money. Mm. Uh, it's a clothing line that I started when I was in college as well. And um, basically, what I wanted to do was I wanted to make designer clothing for big guys, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Because we got designer clothes, which is mainly for like the skinny guys, the small guys, you know, they, they only go up to a medium. Yeah, stop at the calves. Stop yeah. at the calves. Yeah. And, you know, I'm like, <laughs> I, I like to work out. You know, I'm not going to just become skinny just for some clothes. That doesn't make any sense. So I started my clothing line for that because I wanted luxury for the big guys. But then I found out that the guy smaller than me really liked my clothes too. So now I make luxury clothes for everybody. You know what I'm saying? So. With more hustle, more money, it's kind of taking its dips and turns just because it's being an entrepreneur in a business, mm -hmm. you know, like no business, you know, it's just skyrocketing and making money the entire time. That doesn't happen, yeah. especially when you're young and you're learning and you get a bump your head and all mm -hmm. that stuff. So with more hustle, more money, it's more of a business that we are starting to get going, okay. you know. We got a couple merchandise, we got some duffel bags, we got some hats, we got some ski masks, we got t-shirts. Um, what I'm looking at right now is to drop something, maybe a soccer jersey. Okay. Pretty soon. Nice. So right. stay tuned. All right. Any yeah. other jerseys on the horizon if that does well? Uh, <laughs> I say soccer jerseys. Another track suit would be nice for the fall time. People love their track suits. I actually do have one of my track suits, but um, I want to add some more colors to okay. it. You know, before I start buying in bulk. So we got some things on the horizon. More designs to yeah. keep coming. Okay. Yeah. I like yeah. it. I like yeah. it. 
And where can people uh, learn more, get, get the merchandise from mm. MHMM? So uh, you can actually go on our Instagram page on uh, Hustle Members. On our Hustle Members Instagram page, just DM me. And uh, we can see whatever size you need, whatever you're looking for, whether you're looking for a tracksuit, hats, any of that stuff, you can find on our Hustle Members on Instagram. Awesome. And before I let you go, mm. the show is called Norwood Digest. Mm. So it wouldn't, it'd be wrong if we didn't tie everything back to Norwood. Of course. So of course. Tell me what your fondest memories are, whether it's in high school, playing football, anything that you remember very fondly here in Norwood. My fondest memory would be just, it's so many things because being on the football field with your brothers, you know what I'm saying? You, exactly. you, you love that. You love being on the gridiron and we're playing together mm -hmm. and we're being amongst each other and then, you know, we're on the away bus and it's us versus everybody else. And then also, you know, just being at this high school too, you know, like I met a lot of really good friends and I'm still friends with now, you know what I'm saying? People that, you know, even when my acting career takes off, I'm still going to come back to know it and still see because I just love the town. I love the people, mm -hmm. you know, they really brought me in. And they loved me for me. And I didn't have to change who I was as a person. I was just me, and people were going to love you. You know, I feel like it's just genuine. And I can say for sure, Norwood loves you, Nate. Yeah. 100%, man. Yeah, thank you for having me on, and, man. Yeah. And thank you for coming. Yeah. Norwood Community Media is thrilled for the fall sports season to be back in action. Our coverage of Mustang Sports kicks off on September 6th when the Norwood High football team squares off with Stoughton at 6 o'clock. Only on the NCM Community Channel. If you missed the game or just want to rewatch it, just head to norwoodcommunitymedia.org and look under Community On Demand. Thanks, Jack. Well... For Your Town at Work on Digest, I'm here with Joe Kidd, who's the Director of Technology for Norwood Public Schools. Hey, Joe. Hi, thanks for having okay. me. So, even though it's the summer, it's a busy time of year for you and your team, for sure. What, what's going on with the, technology, with the technology department while school's out? Uh, well, school's out, we uh, take the time to do a lot of our projects that uh, get us ready for the upcoming school year. Um, so uh, our, you know, we have some annual projects that we complete every single year, um, and then we have some projects that depend on the on the year. Um, so uh, it ranges from our, our data and accounts refresh to um, our hardware refresh. So, for example, um, we prepare our Chromebooks for incoming sixth graders and incoming ninth graders every summer. Um, we take the Chromebooks that we've collected from our graduating eighth graders and our graduating 12th graders and we clean them up, repair them, and we circulate them down to our elementary schools. So our elementary schools are one-to-one. -one. Every single elementary uh, classroom has a cart of Chromebooks in for their students. And those actually come from the graduating eighth grade and graduating 12th grade um, students that had their Chromebooks for three or four years. So they kind of go, kind of go back back through the system. They go back through the system. We recycle them uh, right right to the uh, grades uh, three through five classrooms. Um, and so kind of keep that flow going for the elementary schools so that they have access to the technology every single day um, while giving new Chromebooks to our incoming sixth graders and incoming ninth graders that they keep throughout their careers at the middle school or the high school. Part of this is that um, so many programs are access through technology now so many so many curriculum programs are accessed through technology so they need the access um, and then once they start grade three all the way through grade 12 MCAS testing state testing is all um, computerized it's all online so um, if our students don't have access to technology throughout the school year it makes it a lot harder for them to take the test come the springtime um, you know one of the things that I know it came up at town meeting um, is about the the maintenance and how what you're doing to you know to prevent breakage of the equipment and stuff like that. It would be great to hear just you know because I know you guys are doing a, an awful lot around that and and limiting in order to be able to reuse devices. Sure, sure. So um, we we have so it, Chromebooks especially, and we talk about middle school and high school, but especially mm -hmm. middle school. These are kids. Right? I'm sure lots of parents have seen their middle schoolers' uh, phones in the in, in what they look like after a while. Um, so we do 
buy protective cases for uh, when we issue Chromebooks, we do have cases for them for students. Um, and however, like I said, they're students and, and people have to be com comfortable that there's breakage and that happens. We do have, we have a technician, um, we have a technician for staff and students in each of the levels of our schools. So we have one for the elementary school, one for the middle school, and one for the high school. Here at the high school, uh, we have what's called an STSS program, student uh, technicians, who um, repair, uh, take a period out of the day as part of uh, Doc Crowley's program, um, come down to the tech office and help repair Chromebooks uh, throughout the year, which is invaluable to us and to the, and to the kids and to the district. Um, our elementary technician, Anna Fogg, will, will actually has the opportunity to uh, deliver any elementary repairs that need to be done up to those STSS students. So um, it's, it's a great program and, and we keep our devices flowing. Uh, we do offer optional insurance to our families, uh, grades six to 12. So uh, if there is accidental damage, um, uh, it, we, we take care of it. Um, if they do not purchase the insurance, um, and it's an accidental damage or uh, um, damage that's not covered under warranty, we do invoice the, invoice the families for the repair. You know, before, I, I've got to ask you about the middle school, but before that, um, your staff, um, you, you mentioned a, a few people. Um, just take us through um, the, the folks that, uh, the, the support Absolutely. that's, that's Yeah, so there. I like to tell people that we have the best staff in the Norwood Public Schools. I'm biased, um, <laughs> but I just work, I work with a, uh, just an incredible group of people. Um, I mentioned the technicians, Anna Fogg, Joe Sleeman, John Willette here at the high school. Um, we have uh, a, uh, a gentleman by the name of Moses Forshu, who's our network and systems manager, um, focuses on our, our network, on our devices, and on security. Um, we have Stephanie Bodwin, who is our data specialist, and she manages our student information system which is Aspen, um, and it holds all of our student information, report cards, um, everything, but it also branches, it's, it's what we call our system of truth. It's any other system that we have, curricular system that we have, feeds from that, and she takes care of all, all of those imports and exports and connections in all of our state reporting. And that's part of our big summer job as well. Uh, right now, she has to, we, we, we are mandated to report specific data to the state every single year about staff and students, and then we roll over our SIS for the upcoming school year. It's a, a ton of work, and she does an amazing job. I, I mentioned Laura Mullen. She's our instructional technology specialist. Um, she's a teacher, um, and uh, she works with teachers and uh, classrooms on different technology projects. We work with so many other departments, right? We work very closely with facilities. Facilities is key to um, helping us in technology um, from security to, uh, to installations and, and things of that nature. We work obviously with the curriculum departments and the teachers and the principals, um, our, our, our administrative team. Um, this summer, and in fact, right next door um, in a classroom, because we're, we're going to be uh, putting some new um, computers in our graphic arts lab. We have our interns. We, we hire four, uh, four high schoolers, Norwood High School students, as interns during the summer, and we tell them that they're a part of this team and what they're doing this summer will affect every single teacher and student throughout the entire school year next year. Um, and you're just as important as anybody else uh, working for the Norwood Public Schools. Like I said, uh, the great thing about this job in this department is that um, we get to interact with everybody in the district. Technology touches everybody from right our administrators, to our students, to our teachers, to our facility staff members, to our parents, right? Um, and we get to interact with all of them uh, every single day, and it makes every single day a little bit different, um, some harder than others, right? But uh, it, it keeps it interesting, it keeps it fresh, and, and we get to build a lot of really good relationships around the district. And that's what uh, our one of our biggest uh, mantras is in our department is, that, that we're building relationships and that we're a service-oriented um, uh, department. And, and that's really our job. Well, yes, it's IT, but our job is to serve the students and the families and the teachers and the staff members of the school district because if the IT is not working correctly, then it causes a, a lot of problems for the entire district. I almost feel like we should end it there, but I do have to ask um, very quickly sure. because it is, I mean, you came in 
with the high school project, right? Right around. I, no, I came in two, two years, years after. after. Yes, so right after. Years, right after. So this yes. is your first big. Uh, yes. All right, just a couple <coughs> of highlights um, because I don't want it to end up on the cutting room floor from this interview of sure. what we're going to see in the middle school and what you're working on there. Sure. So uh, this is our. This is my first building project, um, and uh, it's it's been really helpful. Like uh, Vertex and WT Rich have been great and. Um, uh, Joe Sleeman, who's our technician at the middle school, and Moses Forsh, who have been very involved in in this as well with with Dr. Frazik. Um And you're not going to see anything like very very different than what we're doing now. We're not changing a lot of things. You know, students will still have Chromebooks. They'll still be one to one. Right now, the fifth graders that are coming in won't take their Chromebooks home. It'll be still like that model where at least to start where they have mm -hmm. carts in the classroom. But everything is gonna be nice and it's gonna be new. Every classroom is gonna have a nice, um, this will be different for the middle school. Right now the middle school, all have, classrooms have very old projectors in them. Um, they're gonna have nice new touchscreen interactive boards in every single classroom. Um, the, uh, they are building a, a broadcast studio. The media center. Uh, media yeah. center, yeah. Um, which is gonna be really neat, uh, really great great experience for the, for the kids because They'll be able to uh, learn some things down there and bring it up here to this incredible program, the top, one of the top programs in the country as far as I'm concerned with a TV program here. Um, so that's gonna be a great uh, flow uh, from, from the middle school to the high school. Um, we might be uh, investing a little bit in some, uh, uh, they're talking about uh, some virtual reality uh, tools um, over at the media center. So uh, the uh, Christina Serratis, who's the computer teacher at the middle school, uh, does a program called Project Lead the Way, where uh, she works with students on programming um, devices. Uh, it, it re really, a really great, great program. Um, and uh, she's going to be able to expand that a little bit. They'll have a nice work room along with the computer lab classroom to do those projects. So um, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful school, um, brand new network inside and and it's gonna be great to go yeah top-notch technology well yep. i'm excited um i'm excited about what you're doing today you and your team are doing today in in the norwood public schools and and how we're keeping on at the cutting edge of technology and keeping our students with devices in their hands and um, excited about what's to come so joe i really appreciate you spending some time with us thank you very much thanks for having me all right so for uh, Your Town at Work, I'm Jerry Slater. Uh, we'll take a break and then back with more Digest. Thanks, Jerry. That was unbelievable. Um, and thanks to uh, everybody who was on the show, uh, you know, Veterans Services Director Ted Mulvihill, uh, Ron's guest, Nate Buchanan, Jerry, of course, as always, and the great crew here at Norwood Community Media. But mostly thank you at home for allowing us into your living room. Good day and keep safe.